Well, 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 welcome to That's Enough Out of You podcast. I am your host, Bill Rader, and my co-host is with me as he always is, and that is Sean Kane. Sean, what's going on? Billy Raids, what's happening, my man? Uh, we're doing okay. This is a special bonus episode. You're probably going, wow, what did I do to deserve all of these bonus episodes that uh, that's enough out of you has given us but we're we got we have so many questions so many comments that uh that you a lot of smart listeners billy it's been it's been great all the feedback we've been getting so we wanted to respond to everything and uh the last time we did a bonus show we didn't have enough time to do to get it all in so we uh we are doing yet another bonus episode so let's just get right into it sean let's just start uh, because i know you got a couple questions and a bunch of comments we do, Billy. And you know who we start with first, right, buddy? Uh, our patrons. Well, yeah, absolutely. They so, always, always get top billing on our show. Yep. And the first one is from our, our good buddy and, and big time listeners show, Angelo Mariucci, Big Ange. All right, Ange. And this is a great question, Billy. I'm actually going to write a probably an article on this, to put it up on the website. Um, but he says, let me ask you this. If JFK were alive today, do you think he would be considered more Republican or at least moderate Democrat? Um, and there's more here. You look at his famous, most famous quotes, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. How do you feel that statement would be received today? And how would JFK be received today? Well, that's a that's a great question there by Big Ange. Mm-hmm. Um but I think, you know, JFK's leadership, Bill, I think you could put in any era. You could put that in a revolutionary era. You could put it in today's. You could put it. Uh, I think that would be received well anywhere. You know, but the thing is, as far as, you know, how would JFK, what, where would he stand today, basically? Um, you know, he doesn't resemble any politician right. um, that exists today in Democratic Party or the Republican Party, in my opinion. So I don't know. I don't think he would be Republican. Um, but as far as the Democratic Party, he don't represent anybody uh, that's a, that's a Democrat today. And and you got to remember, Bill, he didn't even, uh, you know, resemble anybody back then, Bill. Like right. he, he struggled with, with his own party, with the Southern Democrats didn't like him because of civil rights. Right. I mean, his foreign policy is different than any politician I've ever seen. Doesn't, you know, his domestic policies. We talk about all this, Bill. You know, he was even going after pharmaceutical companies, you know, going around the FDA. I mean, the stuff he was doing was so radical, Bill. It doesn't represent anybody. He was yeah. a true president that was a leader and was actually for the people. And he had his own money and he couldn't be bought. Right. And he was different than everybody else, Bill. So I think everybody's seen what happened. And that's why they don't cross that line, you know, but um I think, you know, he doesn't represent anybody that, that exists today. How do you feel about that? Billy? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, first of all, not to be too literal, but if he were alive today, he'd be coming up on 106 years old. So I don't know that he'd, he'd well, I be, think big he'd Ange be, is putting his question in, you know, what if JFK was in his prime? Oh, I get it. I get it. That way, you know? I get it. Um, I think what, you know, you're absolutely right. I don't think he would fit in as a Democrat or Republican. I think he would probably, you know, he would probably be, um, somewhat where like a Bernie Sanders, not that he's, you know, not that he's that, uh, I, I, you know, he, not that he has the same uh, ideals as Bernie Sanders, but I think, you know, with Bernie, it's kind of, is he, is he really a Democrat is, you know, we know what he's not. We don't really know what he is. I think JFK is sort of in that same, uh, you know, that, that same sort of category. We don't really know what he would, but I don't think he would, he would fit in, you know, either way today, I, I just I think he was so unique. Well, he always said he looked for the American solution, Bill, not necessarily the Democratic or the Republican one, you know, and he and, and he was one to put country over party always. Yeah, and the people he, he, he people was first. not a person who was pitting one side against the other. He truly wanted to unite us, truly wanted to unite us as a country, wanted to unite everybody. He was not someone that was that was trying to rile up. Uh, his supporters, his base against the other side. He wanted to bring everybody together. Sean, name one person, one politician today that does that. Can you? There isn't any. No, I, I can't. No. I can't think of any. 
I can't. And, and Bill, one. the interesting thing is, you know, no matter what area you put him in, he'd still have the same forces against him that, that were trying to take him out. So sure. the question, you know, is it, it'd be the same problem over and over, no matter where you put him in. You know, as far as will he be accepted by the people? I mean, of course he would. Is that type of leadership is what we're missing? We need a JFK so bad today, buddy. But you know, there's one out there. Yep. So, yeah, great question, Angie. And I, I'll put an article up, Bill. We'll we'll get into this a little deeper. You know. Sure. Yeah, it's a great question, Angelo, and and it's one that unfortunately, you know, we we can't answer because. Not only do we not have JFK, we don't have anybody even close. I mean, not even close at this point. And maybe there's a reason for that, Billy. Maybe they all know what will happen to them if they try to do anything that even resembles what he tried to do. Yeah, you know, and and I think he, again, he knew, he faced death, right, Sean? He was sure. he was in he was in the war. He he fought in in World War II. He almost died, Billy. Almost died. So he looked death in the face. Saw a brother die. And I think he thought, you know what, this is my calling. This is what I need to do for my country, even if it kills me. I think Bobby knew the same thing. I think uh, MLK knew the same thing. All of these these guys, you know, Malcolm X, who who we 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 just recorded a show about him. All of these these leaders, true leaders, who understood the perils of what they were doing. They said, you know what, this is my calling. This is what I was put on this earth to do. If it kills me, that's fine. But this is what I need to do because I don't have another choice and I'm not going to be afraid of the powers that that lurk behind the scenes that are working against me. Yeah, and I think you could ask that question about any of those guys, Billy. Ask the same question, just insert RFK, Martin Luther King, you know? Yeah. And it's the same answer, Billy. Yeah. None out there. So great question, Ange. Uh, next one is another one of our patrons, uh, Mr. Scott Hopkins. Um, he says he's this is in reference to the DB Cooper episode, Billy. He said History Channel um, episode on DB Cooper was really good. Uh, but there's an old series I grew up with called In Search of. It's pretty good, and even though some of the information is outdated, it adds some stuff that is still interesting today that nobody else talks about. So, yeah, that was an interesting episode, Billy, that we did on D.B. Cooper, pal. And uh, mm-hmm. we got a lot of feedback. We got even more questions and comments coming on that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that was a story, Sean, that I don't think I had, I had heard much about before we did that episode. So I know I know I had some questions for you during that episode that, um, you know, you, you were able to answer for me. But uh, it was such a such a crazy story. Such a crazy story. Yeah. Jeez. Hey. And he also asked that funny question, Bill, if you thought the government would put people in harm's way. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, they wouldn't do that, Billy. Not them. No. But yeah, if you if you didn't, if you didn't get a chance to listen to that episode yet, go back and listen to it. The the DB Cooper. I think that I titled it uh well, the real DB Cooper, please stand up, because there were so many, so many people who claimed to be DB Cooper or, or were being investigated as DB Cooper. I think there was even a woman who was who was uh, thought yeah. to have been db cooper so you know we sean you definitely had your your thoughts as to who it was and you know kind of let the people uh listen to listen to that episode and come up with their own conclusions but uh, if you haven't heard it go back and listen to it it's in our and i also got an article up on the website about db cooper billy so lots of lots of information yeah Good. so uh next one is from lauren hopkins no relation to scott hopkins at all um She's talking about the Marilyn Monroe episode with Don McGovern, and she her comment is just the truth is always refreshing, and I can't argue with that, Billy. That's true. Um, and we're getting a lot of great feedback still on on that episode with Don McGovern, and and the the Marilyn Monroe article I put up on a website is our highest rated article. Yeah, um, we're still getting a lot of downloads on that episode, and and Don still emailing us uh, information back and forth, so. You know that was great, Billy. That was yeah, still we'll have one of to get. Highlights. We'll have to get him back on for a part two. Yeah, well, definitely. There's still a lot more we could talk about. Absolutely. All right. So the next one, Bill. We got a lot of comments here, but the next one's actually a question, and you're probably gonna get me fired up, Billy. And you're probably gonna have to get me back on the rails here. All right. Uh, but this is from uh, 
uh, Sean uh, McNally in Worcester, Mass. He said, uh, Sean, I know, uh, because I talked to Sean uh, a little bit, and he says, I I know you think the offseason is going great, and our Notre Dame Fighting Irish are looking great for 2023, but what do you think of the um, latest transfers. So I don't know how much you've been following, Bill, but uh, I know there's a lot of guys in the in the transfer portal now, well, right? Well, of course, because the NCA has a transfer portal. You know, they made it that the kids could just say, "Play me now," or I just transferred to another school, and then yeah. go there. And if you don't play me, I'll go to another school. But anyway, as far as Sean's question here, Notre Dame had, you know, four recent transfers, all big names, the high recruits. Uh, one of them was Tyler Buckner. Um, and he transfers to Alabama uh, because he didn't get the starting job. And, and um, you know, he loses the starting job and he transfers to Bama. Now, you know, we also had uh, another transfer, Lorenzo Styles transferred to Ohio State. Logan Diggs, a running back, uh, he's looking transferring probably to LSU. And then Prince Colley, a linebacker, transferred to an SEC school, either Tennessee or Vanderbilt. So, um, the all of them bill, uh, transferred because they, they weren't starters or they didn't want to share time or they didn't want to compete for the job. So they transferred to somewhere else, interestingly to the sec. So what I want to say, Bill, one thing that gets me crazy is again, the media, the Notre Dame media is so bad and just frustrates me to, to, to no end. They, I can't even go anywhere to listen to, to my Notre Dame fighting Irish anymore, Bill, because I think the, the people covering the team are so bad anymore. And there's maybe a couple exceptions, but their take on this whole thing, Bill, was Freeman's losing the team. Uh, this is not good. You know, the Buckner didn't get a shot and all this other nonsense. And it's a negative take. And I'm thinking, Bill, if Nick Saban at Alabama is poaching your program, if all these guys are transferring out because they can't get on the field and they're going to SEC powers, mm-hmm. That's a positive to the team. That shows me that Marcus Freeman has the roster where Brian Kelly couldn't get the roster. Right. I agree with you there. So I think there's a couple of schools of thought on this. So obviously number one is there's just, you know, there, there's not, obviously you're not, there's not enough room to play all these guys, right? There, no. So some of them are going to go and, and that's fine. That's their right to do it. And I think that's the other school of thought is, they do these, you know, the kids now have an opportunity to go where they can play. If they, you know, if you commit to a school for, you know, previously before this, this, these rules were put in place and you got stuck behind a guy who was going to be a four year starter, what, what's your option? You really don't have a whole lot of options. You know, you're well, going to sit out at least a year. My if, problem, Bill, but, is they, they should have one, one transfer. They should have a timeline set. And this is where you have to, you have up to this day to transfer. And that's right. it. No, and I agree. Wherever you transfer, you're stuck there. You can't be moving around four times during the season. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You I know, agree but, with that. But, but the thing is, Bill, here, here's the problem though, Bill, here's the problem with what I have with the, the Notre Dame media. Like, and, and I have a little problem with, with my own fan base here, Bill, because I think the Notre Dame fan base, the majority is so negative. It drives me crazy. And, and it's like, you know, they talk, Brian Kelly won 10 or more games every year, and they talk about the program like it's Rutgers. They're constantly complaining. And mm-hmm. here's here's what I think the Notre Dame media does, is they know that, number one, the haters love to, to hate on Notre Dame. So they also know the fan base is all negative. So if they say, if they have a take that's negative, no matter what the situation is, like this should be a positive, but they have a negative take on it, they're going to get more likes. They're going to get more subscriptions. They're going to get more uh, feedback. Because of the negative. So right. they take this negative take that to me is stupid. Like, I understand that now, you know, uh, Buckner leaves us in a position here where we can't have an injury. You know, if Sam Hartman gets hurt, all of a sudden we're in the same boat we were last year. But you know what, Bill? He, he won a starting job. He won a starting job. And, and Buckner's going down to Alabama because he thinks he has a better chance of starting down there. What does that tell you? That's a positive to me. He's a great player. Tells well, you, it, well, it tells me that that he, if he thinks there's a better chance down there, tells me that Hartman's a great player, right? But it, but yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it just shows you the the strength of recruiting right now in Notre Dame. Sean, yeah. it's no different than the Yankees fan base. Yankees fan base is is negative, constantly negative, 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 negative. The only time that the Yankees that that were not negative, 
and and I group myself in there. I mean, I'm not, you know, I I, I don't I don't call uh, cry and complain like a lot of Yankee fans do. The the only time that that you know we don't cry and complain is be, is when you know we win a World Series, and that I know I hear you, and, and Bill. You know what I wanted? I glad you brought that up because I think Notre Dame, the Yankees, and the Cowboys are on the same boat because uh, absolutely either love them or you hate them, and the, you have the bunch of haters that just love to hate those teams. And of course, you know, I love to hate the Yankees, but you know that, but I know, uh, you know, but they either love them or they hate them. And the, the fans, you know, that, that a lot of them are hat wearers, Bill, you know, that like sure. the Yankees have a lot. Notre Dame has a lot. Cowboys sure have a lot. Yep. Just walk around. Don't follow the team. Don't, they're not diehards. Like, like me and you are like you are with the Yankees and I am with Notre Dame and they just wear the hat and, you know, I talk to Notre Dame fans. They don't even know the players on the team. It drives me crazy, but, but right. you're either a fan or you're not. Right, right. I agree. You know, go watch the NFL. You want to complain. You don't like Notre Dame. But the, the media, just the Notre Dame media is just like the mainstream media, Bill. It drives me nuts. It's it's terrible. I can't watch it. I can't listen to these guys. Their takes are terrible on everything. Like, how is this a negative? Like, I don't understand. Like, Freeman made the roster better, and you're pounding the guy. Like, yeah. I don't understand. You yeah, know? what's he supposed to do? I mean, what are you going to do? In, uh, invent a new position for the guy to play? Bill, he's trying to get a championship, Bill. And, he's, right. and when Alabama's poaching your program, and they, they've now taken Keon Keeley, a top recruit, they've taken Tommy Reese, our offensive coordinator, and they've taken Tyler Buckner, a backup quarterback. I mean, when they're poaching your program, you're doing something right, Billy. Yeah. So the Notre Dame media has got to get off this, this nonsense about being negative just so they can get likes from the haters and from the – portion of the fan base that just wants the bitch and complain about everything and they, they've yet to even take the field for for a practice so let's let's well they they, they they just finished spring billy right so let's let's you know let's uh pull back on the the uh the hate and and you know let's wait well, they're all about getting season. clicks well right. get let's, likes, let's at know? least wait till they play a game well then they you know they just want to get likes billy i know i know yeah well i mean so, that's that's all the internet is now, though. You look at some oh, of these headlines. Well, these when we headlines. ever get like that, Billy, when we get like that, it's time for us to, to call it, buddy. No, we're not going to get like that. I don't. I have no, you know, no interest in doing that. People are going to listen to us. And they're not going to listen. We're not going to lie. We're not going to put up stupid headlines to, to get people to click. Uh, you know, you either like us or you don't. So let's get out of the next one, Billy. I don't want to talk about the media anymore. All right. All right, buddy. So the next one is from uh, Marty Kane. He says... Guys, loving the website. I listened to D.B. Cooper episode, and he said, did the FBI have a detailed report saying why they didn't do anything when the plane landed? Now, Bill, you asked that question. Right. Remember about the SWAT team? Well, so, when they landed when they landed to fuel in Seattle, yes. that's what I right. wanted to know. Yeah. Well, we got another response from another one of our, our key listeners, uh, Marty O'Bell. So I want to read that comment because he – Okay. He, has, he has a great uh, comment here that kind of answers Marty Kane's question. He said, uh, Bill and Sean, shows are great. Uh, love the moon show. Talk about JFK in the space. Uh, MLK, D.B. Cooper, learned a lot from Marilyn Monroe, JFK episode. Uh, but just a little info on D.B. Cooper. Bill asked during the episode about uh, SWAT response when the plane refueled. As a former hostage crisis negotiator at work, I can say that SWAT in 1971 were still in their infancy. And if D.B. Cooper was nonviolent or not amped up to do anything in a threatening manner or threatening hostages, they may not have had any thoughts of that type of response. Just feed for thought. Uh, just love what you guys are doing. Keep up the great work. So. I think what you know Marty's saying, and he's right there, Bill. SWAT was really in its in its infancy mm -hmm. back then, in in these you know first responder type situations like this, and uh, maybe they weren't prepared for it, Billy. To answer Marty Kane's question, that's I, probably I, that's probably the 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 right answer. I think you know I I don't know. I, obviously, he would he had a bomb, so clearly he was. You know, he was threatening with violence, but um, right. I mean, no, you're absolutely right. If they weren't prepared. The thing is, Sean, though, and I mentioned this when we did the show, there were hijackings happening all the time during. I mean, there were how there were so many hijackings. They were just constant during that right. period of time. 
So you would think there would be some sort of protocol that they would be following or at least put together some sort of a, you know, an emergency protocol where they could get a, a team together, uh, especially because the hijacking hijackings were happening in the air. This one actually happened on the ground. They had they had the guy on the ground. There could have been right. Well, one of the suspects, Bill, one of the suspects in DB Cooper, Richard McCoy, was a guy that that was doing these hijackings, and he yeah. would die in a shootout. You know, so I right. mean, yeah, they were happening all over the place. But I don't know, Bill. Maybe like like Marty Bell says, they were just you know in their infancy and they're just not prepared. And and you know, I I don't know. Yeah, I guess that's the most. I don't know. Most reasonable explanation. So next one, Billy, is um, from your buddy, uh, Kevin O'Shea. He actually put a comment on Facebook, Bill, but I want to read it with these other questions because this this is really great. He said, uh, love the D.B. Cooper episode. Every time I hear his name, I think of D.B. Sweeney. Are you familiar with him, Bill, the actor? Yeah, of course. He says, I think of the movie A Fire in the Sky which scared the crap out of me and is supposed to be based on a true story. I would definitely listen to a podcast that tries to get to the bottom of that mystery. And then he says, and he laughs, he said, see what I did there. And I think he's trying to get us to do a podcast on that, Bill. I don't know how familiar you are. Did you see the movie fire in the sky? Not that I remember what, what was it about? Well, it's based on this, this guy, Travis Walton in this, this, um, this, um, him and his friends, they, they uh, were in the woods and, and Travis Walton supposedly got abducted by aliens. And then they were on their investigation because they thought the police thought that they might've killed them. And then a couple of days later, he surfaces and says this incredible story that he was, you know, abducted by aliens. And they, they did a lie detector and all the guys and they all passed. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's been a lot of books written, Bill and, I could tell you somebody who really looked into this bill. I don't have an explanation for something happened to these guys. I don't know what, you know, happened, but this would be something that, you know, you start looking into more and and maybe we could do an episode on this because I don't know if we'll end up having, we'll probably end up with more questions than we have answers, but it's a fascinating story, buddy. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, it sounds vaguely familiar. Do you know who else was in that movie? Was well, this- D.B. Sweeney or yeah, D.B. Sweeney's in the movie. Uh, the guy, the guy that was the in Terminator 2. I can't think of his name, Bill. Oh, uh, Robert he, Patrick. Patrick. Robert Patrick. Yeah, he's in yeah. that. Uh, uh, who's that? I think James Gardner's in that. A lot of good actors, Bill. Okay. It's a really good movie, Bill. You should check it out. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of good books. I actually got a couple books on it. Uh, there was a Netflix documentary just on UFOs. They had a story on Walton. Yeah, uh, it's just a, it's a it's a fascinating story, Bill, because it's not one of these that you could just say, "Oh, this guy's a wacko." You know, it's it's right. one that's really hard to put holes in the story, and it's just you know, it's pretty interesting, buddy. So maybe down the road we will do a, a podcast on that. And and speaking of Kevin O'Shea, he he also um, he gave us some suggestions for some other for some other shows. And um, I'm trying to think back to what they were. There were a couple of like local, um, local stories, and now I can't even remember. Sean, do you remember? Because I think I sent them to you. Do you remember? Yeah, I forget exactly. I have them written down here somewhere, Billy. But I, I it's in my other notebook. I don't have it here. Okay. But yeah, yeah. The, the, he gives a lot of great comments, Billy. I always enjoy uh, his feedback. We have another one, Bill, a comment that's on, on our website. I want to read this because uh, it's from our, our buddy Rick Otto, uh, the great author who we had on. And he just um, he's just talking about an article that responds to an article I wrote on the, the 1960 election where I debunk all that mob rigged election for Kennedy nonsense. And he just says, I agree completely. All the myths uh, to all this need to be debunked. And that is why podcasts like this one is very important so that was just a great comment from from rick otto bill and let's see the next we got a actually a comment from uh giordano from rome buddy our uh italian mob buddy out there pal okay and he says he says just an observation guys because remember bill i talked i talked about giordano he 
he's familiar with all the crime families in Italy, but not as familiar with the American codes in Ulster and uh, uh, organized crime in the U.S. So me and him exchange a lot of messages back and forth. So just an observation, guys. The Irish American gangsters are more vicious than the Italian American Cosa Nostra, and to me, resemble the crime groups in Italy more than the American Cosa Nostra. Now, that's a fascinating comment, though. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I had a discussion with Giordano on this because uh, he brought that up to me, and I'm like, well, you know, when you think about the Westies and you think of Whitey Bulger and Danny Green and Bugs Moran, and they kind of do resemble more of the, you know, the Camorra and Andragada and the Sicilian Mafia and, and guys like Tito Reina, you know, uh, where the Italian American Cosa Nostra are more in the shadows. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So I, I kind of see what he's talking about, Bill, where, where maybe they are a little bit more vicious and maybe represent because, you know, he talks about this all the time when he starts to learn more about the American Cosa Nostra. They don't resemble the, the crime families in Italy hardly at all. You know, they're totally run different. And we're going to have to do an episode on that, Billy. Definitely. Yeah. So next comment is from Jack from Columbus, Indiana. He said, love the Don McGovern episode. Also love your blog articles. And thank you for getting the truth out. Well, all right. Thanks for that comment. Yeah. Thanks for paying attention. Thanks for listening and, and, and reading. And, you know, it's I know, Sean, we've gotten a couple of of negative comments and, you know, most of them are filled with profanity, which is why YouTube <laughs> takes them down pretty quickly. Yeah. And, you know, what's interesting is I'm just you know, it's nice that people are paying attention, whether it's good, you know, whether they, they enjoy the show or, or they think that we're you know, I know we've been called traitors um, to the country, which is interesting. Yeah. From from people who support a guy who literally tried to overthrow the government. But. I'm just I'm happy that, you know, that we have the support and that we have this attention from from people and just listeners who who take the time to put in a comment um, or, you know, send us an email or go into the website and read what what you've what you've written out there, um, you know, taking time out of your day to listen to to our show. Um, that's all we ask for. That's really all we ask for. I mean, we've been you know, we've been putting a lot of time, a lot of effort into this. We've been doing the show now for, I don't know, Sean, what is it about six, more than six months, probably about yeah, eight months six now. Months. Yeah, probably. Longer. And um, it just for, you know, to just to get the feedback is such great um, a reward for us and just validation that we're doing a good job and we're doing what we, what we set out to do. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, you know, thank you to Jack. Thank you to, to all our Patreons and, and just the folks that listen to us every week. It just, it's great. I'm just so happy about it. Well, Bill, just to follow that up, you know, I've been I've been called from both sides, Bill. The the left wing has attacked me and the right wing has attacked me. You know, mm -hmm. as being I've been called the left wing left wing radical and I've been called the right wing extremist <laughs> fascist. I've been I've been attacked by both sides, Bill, just to yeah. be fair there. Okay. And and recently, you know, I don't want to give out a name, but there's a professor from a local college who reached out to me and he tried to debunk a lot of the stuff I said and you know, he he really called me out and said I was lying about a lot of stuff on JFK and this. And so me and him went back and forth and I challenged him to come on in a debate here, Bill. I said, you could be the monitor because he had good stuff to say about you, Bill. He had nothing good to say about me, but he, he liked you. Uh, <laughs> so I, I said to him, I says, you know, come on and, and I'll debate you. You know, Bill could be the monitor and he wanted no part of it, Bill. But, you know, one of the things he says is, you know, he said, Lyndon Johnson or he said JFK made it impossible for Lyndon Johnson to get out of Vietnam. And uh -huh. I said, how in the world is that possible? And all Lyndon Johnson had to do was not change his uh, withdrawal policy. Right. You know? So anyway, I, you know, we're just going back and forth with this guy and I, I still going to reach out to him again. And if he comes on, Billy, we'll have a little debate, buddy. And you can, yeah, be this is, I mean, we're not going to, this is not a hostile environment. If you've listened to the folks we've had on the show to, to date, and, and, you know, granted, I mean, it hasn't been any, we haven't debated, but be happy to do that. Happy to have a, a, a civil, you know, uh, conversation. This is not a, this is not one of those shows where we're going to scream and yell and, and drown you out. Um, we want, you know, we welcome that. We welcome that, that 
you know, the other side, if you, if you have a, di- a you know, differing opinion or differing story or, f- you know, information that, that would, uh, it, you know, discount or disprove what we're talking about, we want you, on, we'd love to talk to you about that. I, this is not going to be a, one of those contentious shows. You know, we're, we're very, very interested in, in getting the truth out there. That's all we really want to do. So, I welcome, you know, anybody to come out and and certainly I'd be happy to be the moderator and and you know kind of uh you know run run back and forth be, between you guys. So, yeah, don't be afraid of that if if you know if you really feel that way, if you strongly believe that, that you have different information or if you feel we're not being, you know, completely truthful about everything, come on the show. We'll we'll talk to you. We'll talk about it. Just don't quote Gianni Russo because you're going to get pounded. Well, that's the only thing. <laughs> the only thing we, we will attack you on. But well, let's let's finish out some of these comments, Bill. Just hope we right. can get caught up, buddy. Uh, sure. So I got Miles from Atlanta, Georgia, and I love how it's all spread out, Bill, all over the country and all over the world, buddy. Yeah. Uh, but he said, "Love the MLK episode. Uh, will you be doing one on the Black Panthers? Uh, yeah, I'm working on one with Freddie Hampton, and uh, we'll be doing one on the Panthers. Sure. Uh, next, uh, this is from the Cobra, Bill." from Denver, Colorado. And I just want to say, um, when you send in a question, if you don't want to release your name, you don't want your name aired or whatever, you can give nicknames like the Cobra here. And if you don't want your location, uh, you know, say, said over the air, we won't do it. You know, Bill, we'll, well, we'll, I know, I know the Cobra, right? His, I know his name. I'm going to give his name right now. It's Marion Cabretti. And he's the guy that you bring in when, when the cops can't do the job. Yeah, that it's not that Cobra, Billy. Oh, not him? No, nah, he's busy doing Tulsa King, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not him. Okay. But uh, he does have a question here. Uh, he says, uh, actually a comment. He said, the Cleveland mob episode was your best, guys. Could you do more on the mob wars? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm working on uh, one now in the beer wars with Al Capone and Bugs Moran in the war- Roaring Twenties. Yeah, and by the yeah, time I'm this sure. airs, you'll have you'll have already heard our uh, Castellano episode on Castellano, which which uh, wasn't necessarily a war. <laughs> if it was, it ended pretty quickly. But and we also had a uh, one on the Roy DeMay on the Westies that'll be coming up. That'll that be coming one, up. For, yep, that'll probably be the same, probably same week that this that this comes out. I'm not sure. That one comes with a warning, Billy. Oh, that yeah. one's extremely violent. Yeah, it's what it's what you would call. Uh, NSFW, not safe for work and not safe for kids either. Like the old days of wrestling, buddy. They put the big red X over the screen. That's right. So the next one, Bill, is from uh, Kelly Green in Galway, Ireland. He said, please do more Irish episodes. Well, we're, we're planning on doing maybe Molly Maguire's, uh, yeah. you know, another episode on Ireland. Uh, we'll do more on the Irish mob, Irish American mob. Um, you know, but I'm trying to get my brother, Jamie Kane, on. He's going to talk about the Molly Maguires. Uh, so, yeah, we'll do more. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this one is from Luke Minton in Redding, California. He says, guys, love the NIL episode. But as a huge Oregon Duck fan, I have to, degree, I have to disagree with Sean that my Ducks are cheating. Well... Sorry there, Luke, but I mean the evidence speaks for itself. I mean, you know, they're handing out these these two million dollar deals to the high school players left and right. I mean, it, you know, I, I don't know what else to say, Billy. You got any comments on that? Well, explain again how that's cheating. I mean, I know that the you know the rules. Well, the rule the rule is Bill is it's not supposed to be an enticement for high school athletes, Bill. You can't you can't go to a high school senior and say. I'm going to give you $2 million and you're going to sign with my school. Right. They're supposed to commit first, right? Right. And they're not just commit, Bill. They have to sign, Bill. Right. Yeah. They sign. And then once they're enrolled, then they could they, they do an NIL deal. But the thing is, you know, when I see kids that, like I mentioned the Peyton Bowen episode or the, the saga with him, he was committed to Notre Dame. And then all of a sudden Oregon steps in and wasn't even recruiting him. And they offer him a $2 million deal. Then he's got to think about it. Then he, he picks up the hat, Notre Dame. Then he decides he picks up the Oregon hat. Then all of a sudden, Oklahoma pushes him with a deal. And it's like back and forth. Like, it's just like, I mean, come on, Bill. I mean, Texas A&M, they got the coaches on video. 
saying to the to the recruits, high school recruits, you see those guys in the suits, name your price. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Yep. You know, it's not my fault the NCAA's got no backbone. I mean, they're the problem did, uh, here. Did uh what's his name? The the gov former governor of Massachusetts. Did he take over yet? I forget if that yeah, I should have been started. It was gonna start, I think, in March, Bill, or early April. So yeah, I haven't seen any changes though. No. I'd like to see him do something with his transfer portal because it's, you know, it's out of control. But yeah, well, maybe we'll give him some time to, to you know, get into it and, you know, figure things out. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see, <laughs> Billy. Don't have a lot of faith. I know. Uh, well, we'll see. I wish him well. I hope so, because they're really screwing up the college game and it's, it's aggravating me, Billy. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, next comment is from uh, Fizzy Ferg. Great podcast, incredible, interesting discussion with Rick Otto. And yeah, that was, we covered a lot of ground on that one. And we're, we're going to definitely have Rick back and yeah. he's been helping us promote our, our podcast and, you know, he's become a friend, buddy. Yeah. I'd love to get Rick back because I really want to have a discussion with him. I know one of the things he wanted to talk about was censorship and I, I really want to, to have that discussion with him. I think there's a lot of, Things that you know um, are are sort of in a gray area when it comes to censorship, um, you know, hate speech and and things that that lead to um, lead to violence. Um, and, and you know, I, I I just really would love to have him back on and, and kind of get into that with him. I, I some things I think we we may disagree on, um, and so I'd really like to have that that conversation with him. Yeah. Definitely, buddy. So a couple more, Billy, to, to round it out here. Um, this is from uh, Gene Calagirio. He said, uh, Rick Otto was a great show. Really enjoyed your guest. Um, and just to say, you know, Gene is a big fan of the show. He comments on every episode. Uh, you know, he was the driving force, Bill, behind the NIL episode. He was pushing me to do that and uh, trying to line up a couple guests uh, regarding NIL so we could do another one on that, buddy. Yeah, no, but he's Gene's a big college football fan, and he's as disgusted as I am with, uh, you know, the state of the transfer portal and NIL and everything else in ESPN. And, and yeah, he's he comments on all our, our shows, buddy. Big fan. Yeah, we appreciate it. And again, think, you know, keep keep the comments coming and keep the suggestions coming because we, you know, we appreciate it and we definitely take your suggestions. We've done shows based on listener suggestions. We'll continue to do that. All right, buddy. We got two more to finish it out, Billy. All right. We got Joe Walton, who's another huge fan of the show, comments on every episode. He said, uh, JFK plus tapes with a question mark. He said, what? He said, fascinating show. There's a lot of content in here that I did not know. And I'm older than Bill and Sean. So great job, guys. Yeah. So that's been a, that comment I've seen a few different times of people ask, people saying that they didn't know about the tapes. Yeah. Well, again, you know, JFK, he did that. He recorded those because he didn't trust the people around him. You know, he got screwed at the Bay of Pigs and, and right. stuff that was said afterwards. And he wanted to make sure that everything was was documented. And thank God, because now we, we you know, we have that picture where it's not speculation anymore, Bill. Yeah, we could we could honestly say that JFK and RFK were the only two guys there. Maybe you could say George Ball, but besides that, nobody else is talking peace, Bill. Everybody else. And people could listen to those tapes. They could read the transcripts if you want. And you could see the outrageous things that everybody was saying, you know, let's go to war. Right. So let's finish up, Bill. The last comment was one that you mentioned earlier. It's from Stan the Man in Butte, Montana. He says, love the show, guys. Uh, with Sean and Bill, I would love to see you guys argue more because I like it when you guys are on opposite sides of a discussion. Well, if you, you tune into the Malcolm X episode, uh, you'll, you'll hear a little bit of disagreement with me and Billy. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, if, if this is what I said to Sean, if you want to, you want us to do a, a, you know, a weekly show where we yell at each other, we'd be happy to do that. Just, you know, once we get, let's, let's, let's set a goal. Like if we get up to 50, uh, you know, Patreon subscribers, We'll we'll pick a topic, Sean. You and I will pick a topic that we disagree on, and we'll do that. How about that, Bill? If this was two thousand three or two thousand four, buddy, we could have done a great Red Sox Yankees daily. Uh, I know. So they're covering the games, and we probably end up not talking for like a month. 
Yeah. Well, I think we we've gone through that before. So. <laughs> I just I I just remember Sean getting like emails from you constantly about. Oh, I was a tats buddy. That those days I missed those days. That that was baseball was was a it was like almost a war, buddy. It was. It was we we got into that so much and. Matt, I, I just don't feel that way about sports anymore, Billy. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, with the exception of, of hockey, I, I think I just, you know, it's it doesn't it, I don't get as passionate about it anymore. I mean, I still love baseball. I still love college football. But I just, you know, like I said, the Notre Dame media has got me all disgusted. The national media has me disgusted. ESPN is a disgrace. Yeah. Uh, in baseball, I mean, the game that's changing the game. I mean, it's just. I don't know, Bill. I just, it's just not the same anymore. You know, would you say, Sean, I think it probably changes when, when your team wins a championship, it does. you you went through the the drought with the Reds not winning for so many years. I did the same thing with the Rangers, you know, it kind of, you change a little bit, you know, you know, it's not as important to you. I mean, it's still important. You still want to see your your team win, but I think once your team wins, and you know, with the Red Sox, they won four since so four, buddy. Well, I don't remember any of them, but well, I know you don't, but I, so. I keep telling you, so. about I them, believe you. Know? you. Yeah. Um, but I think once that happens, it, it, you know, you kind of your your passion dies down a little bit. Well, you know, Bill, unlike you know, 22 of those Yankee championships, we have living witnesses here that could justify and, and say, you know, that these are real championships, you know what I mean? Well, we don't have to go back to the 1500s to discuss all those titles I, th- I think that it's been more recent than that. <laughs> oh really i don't know billy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean it's just i don't know bill you're right when your team wins the championship it just it changes everything right you know and, and uh, you just don't have that passion anymore especially you know they won four times and it's like now it's like you know i could just complain that the the, the management's terrible and our gm thinks he's still in tampa yeah yeah, you could definitely complain about that. Yeah, but I mean, it's just, I don't know, Billy. It's just not the same, pal. The passion's out there. Yep. I'd rather watch Nate's uh, Teener League baseball games, buddy. Than, than I think that's the other thing. The other thing, too, Sean, is when you have kids and you get involved in their sports and their lives, yeah. that kind of takes away from it, too. That's that's going on, I think, with both of us. So Yeah, it does. It's, it's it'd rather do that, Billy. You know, you'd rather go out exactly. and, and practice on the field with, with, with him and. Yep. Rather than sit there and watch these millionaires crying about how, you know, they can't pitch past six innings. Right. So that's about it, Bill. I'm sure we aggravated somebody tonight. Okay, good. Then we did our get another nasty gram, Billy. That's okay. That's good. Like I said, if we're getting a reaction, if people are listening and giving us feedback, that's what we're doing. That's why we're here. That's what we're doing this for. So again, thank you to all our listeners. Thank you to um, our Patreons. Thank you to uh, anybody who, who takes time out of their day to, to send us a comment or an email or a uh, question. And, you know, obviously listening to the show, it hopefully provides you some entertainment, some information. And as long as you keep listening, we're going to keep doing it. Keep those questions coming. Keep our coming. listeners are intelligent, Bill, and they, they got some great comments and questions. And we even... You know, I even like getting attacked by the left and the right, buddy. That's fine. Well, and, and you know, if they weren't laced with profanity and they and <laughs> we didn't delete them right away, we could, we'd read them. We would read them. We on the would. Show. We would read them. But, I mean, some of them you just can't, you know. Right. They get deleted so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if, if you hate us and you want to call us radical fascist, you know, left wing or right wing. Well, Bill, you get oh, But keep it you. clean and we'll read it. You get called a left wing radical, Bill. Okay. I get called both, buddy. All right. I got called a fascist and a communist. <laughs> <laughs> How's that possible? Uh, somehow, I don't know, Sean. I think it's it's just the. It might even be by the same guy, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's the world we live in today. I guess. Oh. All right, buddy. All right, Sean. Let's wrap it up. All right. That's enough out of you. Good night, everybody. Good night.